Hello, welcome to Catalyst. I'm Karina Kelly. Tonight we travel to the clear waters of the Timor Sea. Far from civilization, the reefs here are fabled for their rich wildlife and feared for their healthy populations of large sharks. But now our formidable friends have a price on their heads and the poachers are moving in. The adventurous Richard Smith jumped aboard a shark hunting expedition. The plan was not to catch sharks, but count them with cameras. Even so, they end up capturing more than they bargained for. Six, zero. Seven, zero. Let guys go. I don't to go. Seven, six, lean board. Five, four, three, two, one, two. Sometimes, exploring Australia's underwater frontier can be just like visiting the surface of another planet. Sometimes it's a little too deep and a bit too dangerous to explore it in person. So you're best to send a probe. Other times you want to send a robot because down here there is a type of alien life form that can be more interested in eating you than meeting you. Enormous voracious tiger sharks, hammerheads and reef whalers are just the sort of creatures scientist Mark Meekin wants us all to have the chance to meet. And he's worried that our time is running out. We know very little about what sort of fishing pressure most of these reef sharks can uh, sustain. Look, we don't even know what their home ranges are. We have no real idea of just how many should be on an unfished reef. We have no idea of their role in the ecosystem. It's not stopping us tearing them out of the place. This is what a 21st century gold rush looks like. The demand for shark fin is such that in the year 2000, over 16 million kilograms of them were known to be officially traded. Once formidable ocean hunters are hauled on deck and hacked to bits for a few flaps of beautifully streamlined skin. Shark fin shoot. Mark Meekin fears that far too many of the fins heading for the markets in Asia were recently the attached essential body parts of sharks swimming in northern Australia. Now he's on an expedition to prove it. We were heading west from Darwin into the less travelled waters of the Timor Sea on board the Australian customs vessel, the Botany Bay. Three, three. 116, which is about 15 degrees off the start of the bigger. This was to be a patrol with a difference. A biologist from the Australian Institute of Marine Science, Mark had enlisted the customs crew to help him count sharks. Well, there's a number of ways you can get at how many sharks are here. We're trying to do something different. Well, the system the scientists have come up with really couldn't be any simpler. You take a standard domestic video camera, put a tape in it, slide it into a carefully machined piece of old sewer pipe, close the hatch, and you're off on a submarine adventure. Mark had given me the job of keeping the cameras rolling. Each camera is placed into a weighted metal cage with a bag full of crushed fish as a bait stuck out the front. The plan was to throw these overboard to see firsthand how healthy the shark populations of the remote reefs of the Northwest really are. First, we'd look at reefs we know are being fished, then compare them to those that aren't.
After two days' travel, we approached our first destination. Ashmore Island, with its surrounding reef, is a tiny speck closer to Indonesia than the Kimberley coast. This proximity has made it infamous in recent years as a destination for people smuggling. For the last four years, the government has maintained an almost constant Australian presence here. We arrive at this northern frontier for a changing of the guard and a quick trip ashore. Fantastic place, isn't it? Look at the colours, the sky, the sand and the sea. It's a, it's a beautiful and very special place. And um, Indonesians have been coming here for a very long time, harvesting trepang, trochus and uh, sharks. And Australia's recognised that long-standing use of the place by basically allowing them to come here now. We know Indonesian fishermen have been coming here for centuries because for centuries some of them have been dying here. There are lonely graves like these scattered across the sand caves of the northwest reefs. As long as they come in boats with only sails and no motors, these men are allowed to continue their traditional fishing within a large area of Australian territorial waters, the so-called Memorandum of Understanding Box. The MOU box stretches from Ashmore all the way down to Scott Reef. The problem is this is a large area to police, and these days there are plenty of poachers in motorised boats willing to sneak in to haul out sharks. The work we're doing here is a contract for the Department of Environment and Heritage. We can provide good scientific advice saying, look, you've got a problem. It's up to them to make the regulation and to make those regulations stick. Seven, Seven zero. zero. For four days, we loaded cameras and tossed them into the briny. Six, zero. Camera by camera, we built up a bigger picture of the waters around the island. It soon became obvious just how effective at catching sharks the Indonesians are. We found stingrays and sea snakes. We found schools of hungry fish and swimming sea lilies. We even had a few visits from shovel-nosed rays. But with the exception of a lone hammerhead, we encountered relatively few small reef sharks in an area once known to be thick with big ones. The current shark fin feeding frenzy has driven Indonesia to become the largest shark catching nation on the planet. But with their local waters now depleted and desperate for cash, Australian grounds are becoming increasingly attractive. It started off as a fishery that essentially fed the village with a little bit of money on the side. It's gone from that to essentially a commercial fishery now. The demand is coming from the swelling ranks of an affluent Southeast Asia, particularly the rising middle class in southern China. There are simply a lot more people with a taste for shark fin soup and the money to buy it. We're talking a lot of money here. We're talking the shark fin at point of sale in Hong Kong 
100 US dollars a kilo. That's a lot of money in anybody's terms. Okay, coming around two, four, four. Two, four, four. Roger Dodge. Speed over ground, 21 1. It wasn't until we headed south for the reefs of the Rolly Shoals that we encountered sharks in the numbers that once existed widely across Australia's northwest. The Rowley Shoals lie west of Broome, about 180 nautical miles from shore. These three coral atolls offer reefs at their finest. Mark took the opportunity to introduce me to some of his formidable friends. Sharks aren't like other fish. They're very, very special types of fish. They've been around for millions of years. They're basically at the top of the food chain. Now, they're very much, in terms of biology, quite a bit like us. They mature late, say 10 to 12 years in some species. They live a long time maybe as many as 50 years in some species. And because of that, they can't withstand high rates of fishing. It doesn't take much to wipe them out. In contrast to Ashmore Reef, the Rollies remain the realm of sharks. Not only the usual small suspects, but silver tips, hammerheads, and the ultimate reef predator, the tiger. Here was a diverse and abundant community of sharks, living amidst a healthy population of fish. Hopefully, this survey can begin to answer questions like how many sharks should there be in a place like this? And what will happen if they disappear? Now, what we're doing effectively is like walking into a national park in Africa with a big gun and shooting all the lions. That's what we're doing here. It's what we're doing now. It's likely to have effects that reach on into the future well beyond our lifetimes. Even before our work at Rolly Shoals was complete, it became clear that the sharks here will soon be in the firing line themselves. Before sunset, a Coast Watch plane spotted a number of foreign fishing boats doing a daring snatch and grab raid into some reefs just to the north of here. Now they're undoubtedly after shark fin, and hopefully by steaming all night, tomorrow we'll be in a position to intercept them. Shark fin has been found, hidden under the decking. And Mark and I are allowed on board to see it. Bloody hell, there's some big sharks there. Yeah, it's a big one. Look at that. There's some big sharks here, some big, big sharks. Black tip. More black tip reef sharks. And that's what they're after, the cartilage. The, um, <laughs> that's shark fin soup. They're down here because these sorts of sharks are basically extinct in their own waters. They've, uh, they've taken them out. They're gone. These fishermen may be taking a lot of risks, but a quick look around the boat makes it obvious that they're not the ones making a killing out of shark fin. A compass is the only concession to navigational technology, and a hand pump, the only thing keeping their leaky boat afloat. But even a single, simple boat with a few long lines like this can do a lot of damage. Well, this in itself might not look like a huge haul of sharks, but we know for a fact that some 40 boats were working this area illegally last night. 
Now, if every one of those boats was catching this many sharks in just a few days, that's a hell of a depletion of the shark stocks around here, especially when some of these are very old sharks. But there's more to shark finning than illegal Indonesian fishing boats. Increasingly, Australian boats are working the top end for shark as well. Now in Australia, we have a burgeoning fishing industry that's targeting sharks. If a few Indonesian fishermen can fish this place out using, using simple long lines, what can Australians do to the rest of the place? Man. By the end of the day, two boats had been arrested and 40 had escaped. It takes time to process them by the book. Now these men and their meagre possessions were on the way to Broome to see the magistrate. There's no point in arresting them and throwing them in jail for a couple of years. They'll be back again as soon as they get out. If you're really going to get at the problem, what you have to do is provide alternative livelihoods for those fishermen. It seems while there are still sharks to be caught, this gold rush is going to prove difficult to stop. Richard Smith reporting from the jaws of a dilemma. And finally,